Do you like photo etch? In this video I'm going to be building this entirely metal Sherman tank. Hi guys, the kit in this video was sent to me about a month ago by the people at Myustar for a review on my channel. We can see from the text and the image on the front of the box that this is a Sherman tank and it's pre-printed in this uh, winter camouflage scheme. Let's have a look inside the box. First of all we have this leaflet which I believe advertises the other kits that the company makes. There are no military kits in this uh, leaflet but there are on their website. Then we've got the instructions, we'll come back to those in a moment. And then here is the kit itself. We've got a metal gun barrel. A bag of, um, let's call them balloons, I'm not quite sure what these are for. And then the kit itself is here. And you can see it is sheets of photo etch material pre-printed. So we've got that um, dark brown and white sort of winter camouflage scheme on one side and then the bare metal on the other side. So on this, um, what would we call it, a fret, I guess, we have the main body of the Sherman. And then we have the tracks here, two links on each side. And those tracks have the quite distinctive uh, Sherman track pattern, tread pattern, um, sort of 3D... Um, embossed in them. And then we have the turret, uh, the side of the tanks, a few of the bits and pieces. I did notice when I took these out of the box that they were slightly bent at the edges. This wasn't a result of the postman because these were really well packed inside cardboard and plastic. Um, I think it's just the way it was packed at the factory perhaps. Luckily it didn't damage the, uh, the parts. And moving on to the instructions, we have a map of the parts here. This is quite useful because the, the parts are not in a logical numerical order on the uh, photo etch frets. So for example, part 28 is not guaranteed to be anywhere near part 29. The instructions start with construction of the lower part of the tank. And you can see here they follow a very similar format to uh, most model kit instructions. It's worth pointing out that this kit is designed to be built without any glue uh, whatsoever. All of the attaching parts have tabs which just fold over to hold them in place. I'll show you more of that later, but uh, my experience of this was it worked really well. And as we move through the instructions, you can see we build up the suspension and the wheels and the tracks. Again, very much uh, the sequence that we would expect in a plastic kit. So starting the kit, I found the easiest way to remove the parts was with a sharp knife. They've normally got just one or two small attachment points, and they tend to be in places which are easy to remove. I needed to do a small amount of filing on some of them, but to be honest, not much at all. Here is the bottom of the tank. You can see that the bending points are pre-marked both on the bare metal side here and on the printed side as well. There's absolutely no difficulty bending them. If you're one of those people like me that really hates bending photo etch because you always mess it up, um, I'd had no difficulties with it, certainly with the major parts in this kit. The attention to detail surprised me in this kit. There are quite a few small parts to add to this uh, lower hull. One criticism I would have here is the instructions don't always make it very, very clear where parts go, or sometimes the orientation of those parts. So later on in the instructions, for example, it will be unclear sometimes which side the bare metal face goes and which side the, uh, the patterned face goes. You can see here a good example of all those slots in this side piece. This is where the tabs will come through from the adjoining pieces. My experience of this kit was that all of these tabs and slots were very, very accurately placed. Uh, there was never any alignment issues or anything like that. And of course those slots also act as a guide for pieces like this which curve around. They basically guide you as to how much the piece should be curved around.
Here is the bottom of the tank. It's nice and square, it sits nice and stable on the mat. Now this sequence here is quite hard to show you because the pieces are very small, my fingers are in the way, and I don't have my macro lens at the moment either, but I'll do my best. This is one of the many curved parts in the suspension. Any part that needs to be bent or made into a circle has lots of creases on the inside, so that process is very easy. So in this case, for example, I used a pen to help me bend them initially. And then the slots in the receiving piece guide you as to the curve. Here you can see that finished suspension piece. And this was one area in particular where the instructions are not clear about which side of the uh, metal piece was facing in and which was facing out. So you do have to read a bit further forward in the instructions sometimes. And then all three pieces together. One slightly odd feature of the instructions is that even when we have the same piece being used multiple times, they have separate numbers, which is a bit confusing. And those numbers are not sequential either. So you see here we've got C26, C32, C35, C55, etc. But they're all the same piece, there's no difference between them. Um, which is not a big deal, but it does sometimes make life a bit more confusing than it needs to be. We can see the return rollers here. I haven't shown the individual construction of those just because it's quite hard to see uh, with my fingers being in the way. And the drive sprocket. There were a couple of parts where bending or trying to get the tabs into the slots caused the uh, printed paper to come off the metal. So if you see any exposed metal on the outside of the tank, that's because that paper printing has come off. Although to be fair, that has only happened in a few areas and only in very small places. The tracks were super easy to attach. There's one piece for the top and one for the bottom. And they have tabs which go into the side of the tank hole, which gives you guidance as to their position and it also keeps them secure. Throughout the construction of this vehicle, I use different techniques to bend the tabs over. Sometimes I use the end of the tweezers but the best tool I found was the sanding stick that I have. The two ends of the tracks go together using the standard slot and tab system. And before I move on to the uh, upper hole, let me take a moment to say thank you very much to my Patreon subscribers. Their names are on the screen now and they provide uh, monthly support to the channel, which is massively appreciated. Thank you very much, guys. I know that in these times in particular, it can be difficult to uh, do things like support Patreon uh, members. So I really, really do appreciate the fact that you support me each month. Moving on to the top of the hole, and as you can see, it is uh, one large part. And you can also see there the dozens of small slots in it, therefore the various additional details that you'd expect, so the tools, extra tracks, and so on. There's some quite clever printing being used for some of these tools. So here, for example, you can see the spade, and it's got the uh, printed sort of brown handle, and then the bare metal uh, for the head itself. Attaching these is fairly straightforward, slightly fiddly, but there are guidance um, outlines printed on the tank hull so you know exactly where they go. And those tabs just fold over from the other side. Here we can see three of the tools added. I haven't shown all of the uh, various things being added because there's so many of them. And very tiny elements like this one here. This is one of the periscopes. Again, I was pleasantly surprised by how easy it was to bend these. I never had any issues where the wrong part would bend or it would twist the entire uh, item or anything like that. 
There were a couple of parts that I missed off the front. The kit does include the headlights and the headlight guards, but to be honest, I couldn't get them to fit. And I think mainly because I couldn't really understand the instructions. I think that is one area where they could have done with a big um, blown up uh, part of the instructions there, which I didn't have. And uh, I just couldn't work out how it was supposed to go on. Even with the tabs as guidance, it just didn't seem to make sense to me. Here you can see the result of adding all that detail to the tank. So we have the 3D spare track links on the side, the hatches, the periscopes and so on. The turret was another area with lots of detail and lots of pieces to be added. Almost as many as a uh, plastic kit I felt sometimes. The nature of the parts on here meant they were smaller than average and they were a bit harder to work with. But you can see the result of that is we have a lot of detail. We've got the nice raised hatch, we've got the periscope on top of it. So it's clear they haven't skimped on the detail. This kit is well engineered and you do need to follow the instructions carefully in sequence. Uh, particularly in this part here where I got a little bit um, keen and I folded down the front and the back of the turret before I should have done. It turns out that's a bad idea later on. Um, so yeah, don't get tempted to do that kind of thing if you build this kit. The back of a Sherman turret, of course, has some fairly complex curves. And I feel that's been captured really well, considering the, uh, the entire thing is made out of metal. Despite using no glue at all, this metal gun barrel is secured to the bottom of the turret very securely by using this simple mechanism that goes over the top of the end and locks it into place. There's absolutely no unwanted travel in that barrel whatsoever. The kit includes this printed piece here on the right to go around the bare metal gun barrel. I almost left that off because I thought it wouldn't work very well, but it turns out it was pretty decent. It was easy to bend because it was already uh, marked on the, on the uh, bare metal side. Of course there's a seam line where that piece uh, joins, there's not much you can do. I just made it as tight as possible and then just uh, positioned it downwards. And then finally we have the muzzle brake. This was fairly fiddly. Again, I used the pen to sort of shape it initially, and uh, I finally got it onto the end of the barrel. It doesn't look brilliant, but it doesn't look too bad. One area of clear difficulty was getting the bottom of the turret bent into the appropriate circle shape so it would fit into the top of the tank hole. That was really difficult and I do feel there could be a better mechanism for doing that. Um, I still haven't got it right, but uh, it's the best I could do. Okay, and at that point I still hadn't really figured out what these yellow things were for. Finger protectors maybe? Anyway, let's have a look at the final model. Okay guys, and that was my build, and uh, obviously not paint or weathering because it doesn't need it, of the Metal Sherman, which was supplied to me by Mayu Store. I'll leave a link to their website in the description. What did I think of this kit? At first I was quite wary because I'm not a huge fan of photo etch and I was expecting to have lots of problems with parts not folding properly or folding in the wrong place, maybe parts getting twisted and so on and me not being able to flatten them out again. I didn't have any of those problems. The metal is sufficiently thick that you can't really accidentally twist it or turn it or damage it, which is great. 
It's a well-engineered kit, definitely. All of the tabs and the slots line up. Um, despite the material, there's a good amount of detail. The curves are represented well, for example. I mean, the, the turret really is, is excellent, considering it's all made from just flat sheet metal. It was quite an enjoyable build. I did spend a large part of the build, probably about 40% of it, making those wheels and suspension. That did get a bit tiresome at times. The rest of it was enjoyable enough. So from a technical point of view, the kit is, is good, it goes together well. Uh, if this is your cup of tea, then it's um, a good example of a metal kit. There were a few minor problems. Some of the smaller pieces which need to be curved were quite difficult. And sometimes I did, as I, as I said, uh, end up stripping off that printed um, textured layer by accident in a few places. Nothing major though. Personally, I do like the painting and the weathering stage of, uh, of model making. So I'm not sure if metal model kits are something I would build on a uh, regular basis. But I did enjoy this as a, a change from what I normally build. Price-wise, um, obviously I got this kit for free, but on the website it's uh, about 34 US dollars. Obviously shipping would depend on your location. Scale-wise, it's not mentioned on the box. It's definitely smaller than 135th scale. It might be closer to 148th. So overall, I think I would say uh, it's a nicely engineered kit. It's a, obviously a popular subject to Sherman. Nice printing. If you think that metal kits might be for you, then I think this will be a good example of one to try. I probably wouldn't rush out and buy another metal kit to build next week. Uh, but I think I would definitely be interested in maybe trying another subject at some point in the future. Okay, and that's it for today, guys. In next week's video, I'm going to be building some 172nd scale armour, which I haven't done before. It's a nice little kit, which I think you'll enjoy. So I hope to see you then. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Thanks, guys.